What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. So now that Panasonic has officially announced their Panasonic S5, which is an entry-level full-frame camera, and it has an amazing assortment of video features. But now the question is, where does Panasonic go from here with their GH6 lineup? Because the S5 is coming in at $2,000, which is basically the GH5 territory and probably the GH6. So is the GH6 going to be ex more expensive, the same, or is it going to be cheaper? And how is this actually going to fit in their entire lineup? And if you watched my previous video, the last thing that I said was... I have a feeling that Panasonic is in a transition phase, and we're not really going to see their full vision for at least three to five years. And I thought about it a little bit more. What could they actually do to the GH6 to actually start or possibly complete this transition phase much faster? So I thought of two things that Panasonic needs to do, and no, autofocus is not one of them. I'm gonna be strictly talking about these two features from a narrative filmmaker standpoint. So you're, pos you're principally behind the camera, you're pulling focus, what have you. And without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna try not to rant too much, but no promises. So the first thing that Panasonic needs to do to the GH6 is actually give it a Super 35 sensor. Hear me out, I will explain this. So the Super 35 sensor needs to have enough megapixels so that you obviously get 4K in Super 35 mode, but you also need to at least have 4K in Micro Four Thirds mode. And between these two modes, we should probably see 4K60 in Super 35 mode, since we already see that in the S lineup, but the 4K mode, or sorry, the Micro Four Thirds mode could maybe see something like 120 frames a second. Could happen. And because we have this larger sensor, assuming they don't cram it with a ton of megapixels, but just have enough, we should be able to see a much better ISO performance from the Micro Four Thirds sensor. But not only that, hopefully with more color information and dynamic range, we'll hopefully also see the full V-Log show up in the GH lineup, which would be awesome. So the second thing that Panasonic would have to do with the Super 35 sensor is, should it be a Micro Four Thirds mount? And some of you guys might be wondering, would that even work? And technically, yes, there was a camera made by JVC where it was a Micro Four Thirds mount and a Super 35 sensor. And if you actually take a look at a lot of the lenses that are available from third parties and even some of Panasonic's own native lenses, some of them actually do cover a Super 35 sensor. In terms of third party, if they've made the lens in different mounts, whether it's Sony E-mount, Canon uh, R-mount, or maybe even a Fuji mount, but they have happen to have a Micro Four Thirds mount version, then yes, those actually do technically cover a Super 35 sensor. They simply swapped out the mount. And basically, if you were using it on a Micro Four Thirds sensor, you're just going to have the crop in uh, with that lens. So that's not a big deal. But I'm actually telling Panasonic, don't don't do the Micro Four Thirds mount. In fact, you should have an L mount on the GH6. Now hang on, because what happens to the Micro Four Thirds people then who bought all those lenses? I actually theorized this back with the S1H when it was announced. And I said that Panasonic could very well be developing an electronic adapter that can successfully bridge the Micro Four Thirds to the L mount. Now, there's two things that needs to happen. First of all, most people are, were saying, why would you even do that for a full-frame camera? I explained that, but it's going to make even more sense for a Super 35 with a Micro Four Thirds mode. But can this actually be done? And I think it can, because if even though the flange distance is very close between the L mount and a Micro Four Thirds mount, I think it's about a one millimeter difference, the L mount is much wider than a Micro Four Third mount. So basically, this adapter would need to sit in. And this is technically doable because I actually do have a Micro Four Thirds to E-mount adapter, which doesn't work great. You can't get infinity focus because whoever made it just didn't do the, <laughs> the actual measurements. But it is doable, and I was able to mount a Micro Four Thirds lens to my Sony camera. But anyways, that being aside, if Panasonic does this, think about it they will have successfully bridged 
all their lenses to work on the L mount system. And therefore, people can still use their old lenses that can handle Super 35, but if they happen to start buying other L mount lenses, they can use it across the board, very similar to Sony, where E mount is from their A6000 lineup all the way to their cinema lineup. If Panasonic does this, they have to do it right. Not only does it have to work completely, but they cannot make this adapter expensive. If they have a GH6 announcement, whoever pre-orders it should get it for free or get a super, super heavy rebate on it. But even if they miss out on it, they should not make the adapter like $300. In fact, I would say they're pushing it if it's $150. That's probably as much as I'm willing to spend on a GH6 with an L, with the Micro Four Thirds to an L-mount adapter. But I would actually say if they can make it for 100 bucks or less, that would be great. It would give people the ability to feel good about transferring over while still not losing their Micro Four Thirds lenses. So with all that thought in your head, now imagine where Panasonic sits. They now have a Micro Four Thirds sensor in their GH6 that's capable of full V-Log. It can go up to Super 35. And then you have your S lineup that can go from Super 35 to full frame. You now have three very, very capable sensors with very, very different lens options. And on an independent filmmaking production or even up to a major production, you now have this camera that can be flown on a gimbal, a car rig, drones, because it's so much smaller with their smaller Micro Four Thirds lenses. But you can also go up to Super 35, like the Sigma 18 to 35 combo that's really, really popular, but now you can actually use it in Super 35 mode. And then you have a full frame camera that can do all the rest. Like you literally have everything you could possibly need with the full V-Log space and hopefully HDMI RAW also comes out of the GH6 as a bonus perk. But I don't think it's actually a bonus perk anymore. I think this is something we're gonna see a lot more from different camera manufacturer with Panasonic leading the way in this regard. But you also have to think from Panasonic's point of view, if they did give ProRes or ProRes RAW internally in their camera, I think they actually have to pay a license to Apple for each camera. But Panasonic, if they give ProRes RAW to the GH6, they're not paying those licenses. They might be helping Atomos, but otherwise Atomos is the one incurring whatever licensing fees they need to have, is my guess. So I think this is a completely off tangent here, but I think the next war is actually gonna be external recorders because right now Atomos is leading in terms of the budget market. But I think we're gonna start seeing more camera manufacturers, or sorry, more monitor manufacturers that are gonna make cheaper versions that can also do ProRes RAW. And Blackmagic is obviously gonna throw in their cards to try to get uh, Blackmagic RAW uh, out of these other HDMI outputs. So. I think we're gonna be seeing something like that. And it's funny because I literally theorized that this could happen and I've been telling these budget monitor companies, I was like, you should probably think about external recording. Okay, ending that tangent there because I could go on forever. But anyways, what are your thoughts about this theoretical GH6 and do you think it would actually bridge the gap and make the Panasonic world very enticing? Again, once Panasonic figures out their autofocusing system with this theoretical GH6, they're gonna win the entire game. So anyways, leave your comments and questions down below. Let's have an awesome conversation about this and like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.